Welcome back to Be Kind Pediatrics. Today I want to talk about bottle introduction specifically in the breastfed baby. And I'm going to talk today about different types of bottle brands, but I just want you to know that I don't have any sponsorship from any of these brands in particular. These are just recommendations that I would make to my patients on a day-to-day -day basis. So with that, let's dive right in. Welcome to the Beehive Doc Talks with Dr. Blair Rolnick. As a pediatrician and mother herself, Dr. Rolnick is here to answer your most pressing parenting questions and guide you through the tough spots. So first, let's talk about why you should potentially think about bottle introduction in your breastfeeding baby. Firstly, bottle feeding is a skill. So it is a very different mechanical um, movement that your baby needs to learn to take milk from a bottle versus breastfeeding. Because it's a skill that needs to be learned, sometimes if you delay bottle introduction too late, babies might actually have a hard time using a bottle and you might get some bottle refusal later on, which can be extremely challenging for a mother because then she becomes the sole source of nutrition and food for her baby and she's not able to take a break or go back to work without worrying about the fact that her baby might not take a bottle from somebody else. When should you introduce a bottle? I recommend introducing a bottle to your breastfed baby somewhere between three and four weeks. This allows you to have enough time to establish a milk supply and also it allows you to have enough time to get to know your baby's hunger cues so that you're not missing them. It's also a time when your baby still has a suckling reflex and so they're more able to pick up on the skill um, while this is still intact versus if you wait too long and they lose that reflex, it's a little bit harder for them to learn that skill and you can sometimes get into bottle refusal. I recommend for the first bottle that you start when your baby is well rested and not too hungry. So again, it's a new skill that you're asking your newborn to learn. If they're frustrated or overtired or over hungry, it's harder to learn something new. So I recommend usually right after a nap, and maybe after having breastfed about five minutes on each breast so they're not super hungry. In general, you wanna look for the same cues when you're bottle feeding um, and the same cues for when they're full and when they're hungry as you would for breastfeeding. So those hunger cues are gonna be looking left to right, fists in their mouth, maybe opening and closing their mouth um, or lip smacking to name a few. Some of the signs that your baby are is full, to name a few, again, going to be that their whole body will relax, their fists might go from clenched to slightly opened and relaxed, um, or they might fall asleep. On a side note on sleeping, if your baby is just falling asleep immediately after a feed, it just might be that they are sleepy and need a little bit of extra stimulation, especially those babies who are those late um, term babies like the 35 to 40 weekers, they can just fall asleep pretty quickly. So they actually might just need to be stimulated to keep awake during feeding. So I told you to start when they're not overly tired and not overly hungry, somewhere between three and four weeks. Um, how much should you also start with is a common question. Usually I recommend starting small. Again, it's kind of, it's a skill. So you don't want to go, um, from running a mile to running a marathon, start small and build up. So start with an ounce or two and then build up to a full feed. And I usually recommend starting again once a day and then building up, the increasing the amount of bottles that you want or introduce into your baby's day based on your individual family needs. Another thing that I highly recommend when introducing a bottle to a breastfed baby is doing something called paste feedings. So the difference between a bottle and a breast are two things. The mechanics in which you need to remove milk from a bottle are very different from the breast. But secondly, so can the flow. So one of the things that can happen is if a baby is, gets really used to the quick flow of a bottle, they might find going back to the breast to be frustrating when the slow is faster. So one of the ways to mitigate that is to by do, doing something called paste feedings. Secondly, because I actually recommend pace feedings for both breastfed babies and, and formula fed babies because the slower flow allows for a more regulated feedback about when the baby is full and helps prevent overfeeding, which helps prevent things like reflux um, and fussiness and gas. So how do you do um, how do you do a pace feeding? 
you want the baby positioned upright. Same like breastfeeding, you want to have support of their head and neck, but not be actually pushing on the back of their head. You want to keep the bottle actually parallel to the floor. Um, and first bring the bottle to the baby's nose, just like breastfeeding, let them gape open, and then aim the tip of the bottle for the roof of their mouth. Um, so kind of upwards like that. Once the baby, and let the baby kind of take the nipple into their mouth themselves. Once they take the nipple into their mouth, you want to make sure the nipple isn't completely filled with milk, um, just a little bit of milk in it. So if you need to, you can tip it up, tip the bottle up slightly to get a tiny bit of milk in and then bring it back to parallel and let the baby suckle. After a minute or two, if you notice the baby is wanting to take a break on their own or if not um, on their own, tilt the bottle down um, slightly so that they are forced to take a break and pace a little bit. So again, kind of alternating between this, this, and this throughout the feed every couple of seconds will allow your baby to have a better pace of their feeds and not to feed too quickly and get overly full. The next question I often get is, is there a particular bottle you recommend for breastfed babies? So the truth is, it really depends on the baby. The baby, for the most part, chooses the bottle, but there are some bottles that I find anecdotally breastfed mommies have had more success with. So the first one I really like is the Pigeon. Um, I just find that babies have a little bit easier time latching onto this bottle, especially if they're struggling with the latch between the breast and the bottle. I also like that it's made of glass. There is some evidence that glass um, is less likely to have bacteria and molds adhesed to it, so it can be slightly more sterile. Um, and it may also leach less nutrients out of the breast milk, um, so it might preserve some of the nutrition better. So if you like a glass bottle, there's tons of options out there besides the Pigeon. Um, Philips makes one in glass. This is the Nader Sutton. I like this one um, because I like the rubber on here. I think it mimics a nipple really nicely. Um, there's also Life Factory, which makes a glass bottle um, that is also compatible with breast pumps for the most part. So you can pump directly into the bottle, which reduces the amount of nutrient loss because you're not transferring from the pump mechanism to a storage bag to the bottle. Um, Goovy also makes one, which is nice, in glass. Other bottles that I've seen babies who are breastfed have a slightly potentially easier time or preference for are going to be the Evenflow, the Nook, um, the Mam, and the Dr. Browns. But again, just have a few bottles available um, and allow your baby to choose which bottle is most natural and easiest for them. The second important thing to consider besides the bottle and the way that you feed them with pace feedings is actually the nipple. So some parents aren't aware that there's actually different nipples for each bottle um, and they have different flow rates. So if you're in the immediate newborn period in those first three to four weeks and you're starting bottle introduction, I recommend starting with a slow flow nipple. Um, so that depends on the bottle, but it might it's going to be labeled slow flow zero or one um, or preemie, but just look at your bottle brand and make sure that you're starting with the slowest flow. Signs that your baby is ready for a faster flow or that the slow flow is too slow for them are a few things. One, they might start to get frustrated. So they might have chosen their bottle and done well with a nipple. And then all of a sudden they're getting really frustrated with their feeds of the, their bottle feeds. That might be a sign to up their flow of their nipple or if their feeds are taking a really long time. So a bottle feed should take about the same amount of time as a breastfeeding session, somewhere between 30 and 45 minutes. Um, and so if it's really going over those 30 or 45 minutes of feed, I would recommend upping the flow of their nipple. Uh, and lastly, a good sign is if your baby is able to collapse the nipple with each suck, um, then they've gotten too strong for that nipple and up the flow. Think about your lifestyle and your goals and needs for your family and yourself. Um, and if part of that is going to be potentially being away from your baby for extended periods of, periods of time, um, I would recommend that you think about bottle introduction a little bit early. So somewhere between three and four weeks, um, again, so that you don't find yourself in a situation where your baby is potentially having bottle refusal. 
If you are in that situation, I highly recommend you reach out to your pediatrician. They should be able to get you in touch um, or in place with a feeding specialist who can help tailor some specific recommendations to your family and your baby. Hope you guys find this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, please leave them below. Thank you for watching the Beehive Doc Talks with Dr. Blair Rolnick. For more episodes and her practice, visit BeKindPediatrics.com and don't forget to subscribe for more parenting tips wherever you get your podcasts. This information is for educational purposes only. It is not medical advice. Always seek medical advice from a qualified physician.